Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at a math category called patterns in algebra. Now, in particular, we're going to be taking a close look at the classification of number patterns. And within that classification, we're looking at a subcategory called number sets. So to do that, we're going to take a quick look at this short description that tells us all about this topic. So number sets are a arranged set of numbers which follow a particular pattern or rule. As they are arranged in a diagram, they may be more difficult to work with and interpret than number sequences. The sets all follow the same rule. Much like sequences, you use intuition and work with the differences and values to help determine the rule. Remember, when there are large differences in numbers, consider using multiplication and division. If there are small numbers, sorry, small differences in contrast, consider using addition and subtraction. Okay, so number sets as a question type is basically like an extension of number sequences. Both of them use the same kind of concept. You need to figure out what the pattern is just by looking at the clues that you are given. And whereas in number sequences, the clues were in the format of these sets of numbers, in this scenario, they are a bit more challenging because these numbers are provided in a form of a diagram, kind of like how we see in the example question here. And honestly, I think these are one of the most challenging questions types there are. And personally, I know that I've left these types of questions till the very end of an exam to come back to because I had no idea how to solve these questions. So these types of questions really need a lot of practice to just to get used to, to the varying kind of techniques that you can apply for every uh, diagram type or just get used to the kind of approach that you'll take to answering these questions and those really help way more than just doing a couple of questions and figuring out the answer to those so Generally, for these types of questions, the strategy is quite similar. You know that there are a few numbers and generally, if you are given shapes, then the thing in the center has to be your final result. So then how can you manipulate the shapes and the numbers you're given to get that answer for the question? And then the other hint is that in every diagram you're given, all of them have to follow the same rule. And that's the biggest hint that you are provided. So what you're going to do is try and see if a sequence works on one diagram and then see if that works for the next diagram. And if they do, then bingo, you found the answer. All you have to do is apply it to the last diagram to figure out the missing um, part of the sequence. So that means a lot of the rules that apply for number sequences actually do apply to number sets as well. If you see numbers that are changing very, very quickly, then you're probably needing to do some multiplication. If the numbers are changing more slowly, then you might need to do addition or subtraction. So that means that we really need to get used to a lot of these different types of question techniques. So let's do exactly that with this example question. So in this question, we're given a question that says the numbers below follow a certain rule and we're given these three little funny squares with numbers in them. The question wants us to figure out what this question mark is equal to. Okay, so because we know that each of these three squares are basically independent, but they all follow the same rule, we can kind of choose whichever one we want to start out with. So we can choose this square or you can choose this square to use as your example. Now, just because the number here is a bit big, I'm gonna try and work with the smaller one just because it's probably easier to do the maths in your head. And these questions, you really do have to be quite strong with your quick maths, your quick addition, subtraction and multiplication because that will definitely be a big reason of how you save time in these questions. So again, looking at the smaller number, just so the maths is easier, uh, let's take a look at the square. 
So we talked about how in diagrams, generally what you see in the center is going to be your answer. So whatever you do with the numbers on the outside has to eventually result in the number on the inside. So how do we man manipulate the numbers 2, 5, 3, 7 to get the number 31? Well, there is a bunch of different things that you can try. For example, you can try to add all the numbers up. So let's do just that. 2 plus 5 plus 7 plus 3 is equal to 17. Now, adding these numbers has given me a number that's much significantly smaller than the number we're given. Even if we double it, uh, we get 34, and that number is different to what's inside. We can do a quick check by doing the mental maths with the second square by adding these four numbers that are all kind of similar to 10, so that would give us around 40 if you added all the numbers together. Even if you double it, you don't get a number that's in the center. So we can cross out addition of all four numbers as being the correct pattern. It did look like we need some form of multiplication to be present in our number sequence. If adding all the numbers didn't work out, then maybe we can do a different pattern. So for example, we can try to add the top numbers together and the bottom numbers together and then see what happens if we multiply them. Or we can add these two numbers together and see what happens if we multiply them. Or we can sometimes even uh, do these pairs, so diagonally, and see what happens if you do that. So these questions involve quite a lot of trial and error and just trying to see what number gets us closest to this smaller number here. So you can quickly see how easy it is to spend a lot of time in these questions, especially if the pattern just doesn't jump out to you straight away. For example, if there's no cube numbers or square numbers, the question just gets so much more difficult because then you have to actually guess the pattern. So these definitely are one of those questions I would actually leave to the end of the exam to ensure you don't actually run out of time uh, for the other questions that you might have. Anyways, back to the question. Let's try um, common patterns where one of the ones we mentioned were looking at the top and bottom of this square. So if, for example, if we add those numbers together, the top gives us 7 and the bottom gives us 10. Now, adding these numbers together, sorry, we've already added them together. If you multiply these numbers together, you get a number that's way too big. So clearly that's not the case scenario that we want. So what if we actually multiply these two numbers together instead of adding them? That gives us the top number is 10 and the bottom number is 21. Now that is actually looking much better because if you add those two numbers together, it looks like we found our pattern. We got the number in the middle square. So now all that's left to do is try it out on the second pattern. So never forget this step because sometimes you find a pattern that works totally well in the first diagram and then it all falls apart in the second diagram. So that means you haven't found the correct pattern. And sometimes when you make these questions, they can be accidentally those patterns, but then you won't be able to figure out the correct answer option. So you need to try again. So that means uh, we multiply the top row to get 110 and the bottom row 9 times 8 is equal to 72. Now adding those two numbers together has actually resulted in our second number as well. So it looks like that is in fact the pattern that we are looking for. So applying it one more time, we get 6 times 4 is equal to 24 plus 13 times the question mark, which let's just say it's x, has to equal 63. Now, we can figure out what the question mark is by just rearranging this equation. 13x is equal to 63 minus 24. So 63 minus 24 is equal to 39. And so we can figure out that x is equal to 3. So the correct answer option is option A. Okay, so that was the answer for this particular question, but we can see just how easy it was to find so many different ways to try and figure out a pattern for these types of questions. So 
for these types of questions, I would always try to think as simply as possible. The answer isn't going to be as convoluted as you think. So for example, the top and the bottom multiplied together, then added together to find the answer wasn't that complicated. So for example, it's not going to be this one, then this one, then this one again, then this one again, things like that. Try to think as basically as possible, see which combinations work and see how far you are from the correct answer. So when we added all the numbers together, we saw our number was not high enough. So we knew that there had to be some form of multiplication going on and that was confirmed by the answer here. So try and utilize all those techniques when you come across these, te these kinds of questions next time. Hopefully these are of some help to you. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you everyone so much for listening.